let's uh, let's continue with this rookie talk. We got Justin Jackson on the deck. What uh, I think we both really like this guy. What do you got over there, Case? I think if you got to throw one word out for Justin Jackson, it's consistency. You got four years of collegiate production at thousand yards plus, um, fifteen hundred yards last season, fourteen hundred yards sophomore season, eleven hundred yards freshman season, and then thirteen hundred yards this uh, past season as a senior. Eleven touchdowns this year averaging 4.6 a carry um and that's not even like the part that gets people in the nfl excited i think it's the catches i think the uh 122 of them i think the 122 catches throughout the career and and kind of what he did with them is is what everyone's going to be excited about at the next level um and you you are getting a guy who is uh in the 200 pound range like we've been talking about where we've we went with Wadley, who was 200. Then we kind of talked about a bigger guy in, in Josh Adams. Um, and now we're back to a smaller guy. But this guy kind of runs with a little bit of power in his game, just like Wadley. I think he might even run with – like he, he he profiles to me when you watch him as a, as a little bit more of a, of a power running back when, when you kind of see his, his game and, and – and, uh, and, and where it kind of lies. He's not, he doesn't have like crazy long speed or anything, but he's got great quickness. Um, well, that was the word when you said if you could sum up him in one word, I was going to go like quick, shifty. Uh, you went with consistent. That's I went with another consistent great one. Just because of solid. You know, yeah, that's, a, that's a, he's he's Northwestern's you know all time leading rusher, and you got to be consistent. I think to be the all time leading rusher or absolutely just crush it for two seasons or something crazy. Yeah, and to me the vision I think is is pretty pretty awesome. Um, I had in my notes that that he. He lets his blockers get in place. They run a zone blocking scheme there at, at Northwestern, and you know linemen are pulling and and shifting and running all over the place, <clears throat> and and like he does a great job of letting the play develop. That's kind of like what I wrote from from watching him play. Um, and then I watched him him and Howard Griffith on the film room or whatever uh-huh. they were in the uh, the Northwestern film room, and he was sitting down with them. They were breaking down this outside zone read play. And he was like breaking down every single little detail about how you know he, his eyes are immediately at the at the end man on the line of scrimmage, and then depending on how wide that guy is, he's stretching the play out, and then his eyes shift to the safety, and he immediately sees that if the safety doesn't take this the best angle possible right now, he's not going to catch me. And by that time, he's on the back feet of his outside blocker, which means right. that for him to cut up, and the safety can't react quick enough, and he's basically diagnosing these plays like before it happens, and so he's almost reacting anticipatory like it's it's anticipation yeah. instead of reaction and it's it's that le- like that's got to be what good vision is right is being able to read that and let it develop and then have the quickness to to burst up field yeah and well, get I mean, those big yards in, in that zone scheme like you're talking about you're kind of ba- you in like a normal s- scheme you, you're reading from inside out on the zone scheme you're reading from outside in so kind right. of what you were talking about there kind of seeing what's outside and then you kind of read it all the way and then if nothing's going on you kind of just wait until you see a, a little backside crease and then and then hit it and he kind of fits perfectly into this scheme that they were running over there as as well as we talked about Wadley kind of fitting into that zone scheme kind of for the same reasons yeah um but I think and we talked about the power in Wadley's game I think Justin Jackson has has decent power to his game even though he's only 200 he seems to excel in the inside zone runs sure in this system that that uh Northwestern's putting out there I, I really loved what I saw through there he seems to kind of like get skinny through those holes and then for a smaller guy like he doesn't ever really seem to take the big shot out of all these games that I watch you never see him really get crushed and that's something in an interview that I watched him talk about how he kind of takes calculated risks about right. you know oh well I'm trying to make it through the whole season I don't you know right I gotta pick my spots when I'm gonna put my shoulder down and I'm right. gonna cut my losses and, and not take big hits but at the same time he's He's got great lean. His his pad level's good. He's low. Sure. He gets you an extra yard or two. He falls forward. But when, when you don't take the hit, that's very, very attractive. To like, have your guy all season. Right. Coming um, in. and 1,142 attempts over his career. Right. Which is your sick number. Every, so, every, almost a scary number. But, you know, I guess we're not really profiling to be the big yeah. workhorse back in the NFL. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you're going to see huge carry per game numbers from a guy like Justin Jackson. He's going to be a little bit more of a satellite guy, I think. But I liked him through the tackles. I liked him running the inside. That's what we just spent the last couple minutes talking about. He makes guys miss in tight space and in open space. Um, You know, quickness and acceleration and decision-making are all very, 
Very good. Uh, top, rock solid. Yeah. Well, he, he, he has, like you said, he's got really quick, decisive cuts and moves. Um, he will absolutely slap someone in some pass blocking situations. I oh, saw yeah. also n- not only in just straight up pass blocking, but when he's kind of coming off that edge and they want him to chip on somebody, I saw him four or five times just lay the dude who was already engaged and he was supposed to chip on just completely out. Um, I he, saw him block two different blitzers on one play. He will miss on occasion, but again, as we're talking about all these college guys, it's not. I don't think it's a it's a huge uh, something that they really put a lot of emphasis on during the game. It's something that you kind of learn as as you go on and get to the next level. Um, but I don't think I think he's kind of in the upper echelon of that. He's very willing to just put his body on you and 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 give all the effort that he could possibly give you out of that 200 pound frame absolutely he's a super tough dude and he's pretty efficient in short yard of situations yeah. despite that size um and he's he's a grinder he's out there for his team doing whatever he needs to do like I, this michigan state game you know he was he was running into some brick walls and there wasn't a lot of room for him he only had 41 yards and 17 carries but he added seven catches for 51 yards he threw a touchdown in the Chucked fourth one. quarter to give them the lead michigan state ended up tying it up sending it to overtime he scores a rushing touchdown to tie the game up in double overtime. And then in the third overtime, he makes a solid block on a blitzing linebacker, gives his quarterback just time. enough time to hit the sure. guy on the crossing route, and they win the game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I just I love that grittiness to, uh, you know, and he had given up a sack earlier in that game. But then when it counted and the game was on the line, he sure. made the block for the win. And it wasn't a great block. It was just solid enough to give the guy enough time to hit his guy. Yeah. And I, 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 I do think that uh, you know Akram Wadley has a little bit of a quicker twitch to his sure. game um, that, that kind of jumps off the page. But I, I mean, this guy's quick enough, and I think he's got some balance. He's able to hold his line amidst arm tackles, and he doesn't really get tripped up from behind. Yeah, no, I mean he's got he's got plenty of quickness. We've been killing the inside kind of zone run game, but when they do kind of move to the outside zone and and plays around the edge, he's got enough quickness and speed to get that corner um i think he does lack some long speed he does consistently get caught from behind when on on longer runs yeah uh, as, at least as far as i get caught but not tripped up right he'll get he'll get caught just because i think he's out of steam right um but the he quick, doesn't have the, the long quickness speed. To, to get through the the first and second level are really good um and i, I feel like this guy is, is constantly moving and shaking and kind of shimmying uh, a lot of quick cuts and moves but not but but very decisive with where he's going, which all leads to great things. I think he's pretty patient. He'll kind of hop and skip around and wait, um, kind of like you were talking about. This is what kind of has to take place in the zone blocking scheme. Right. Um, and then he'll, you know, kind of make his move through his progressions and figure out which lane to hit. He's, he's really good at pressing up to the line of scrimmage kind of real tight, um, waiting until he's either sucked the defender in or the lineman's engaged on his block. And then he'll explode with a little jump step around the lineman. Uh, when he sees his little hole or lane. So I think there's a lot of good positives with Justin Jackson. I think he's probably going to slide down a lot of boards, Mm -hmm. and I think he's going to be a really solid draft pick a little later in drafts and come right in and have potential to be just as good as RB2 as just about anybody because we talked about the pass uh, protection, which he's more than willing to do. We talked about how his hands and the amount of receptions that he has. Now, I don't love his hands. They're not like outstanding by any means I don't think I saw him drop a couple of balls and and juggle some stuff and I don't think he's the most uh, efficient and best route runner but as you mentioned um, I think he does have a good kind of wit about him about when to kind of well yeah so maybe the routing route running isn't the best but that kind of comes into play what I the point that I was trying to make I think that was off air where we were talking about his pass protection and he knows when his pass protection duties are over and now he needs to release off the line of scrimmage to give his quarterback like an out and and be a safety valve right. for him and you saw him do that a bunch you saw him pick up one or two catches extra a game just because he knows he's not he has nobody to block let me turn around right. and escape this area and be an outlet and those, those are like extra points you're about to get yeah and he can and, turn that into something bigger and that kind of goes back to what you were talking about before he's a pretty intuitive player like mm-hmm. when you were talking about how he was going through his progressions and his reads on the run there like yeah exactly like he that that if that's a word that spills right over into those kind of plays while i don't love the way he runs his routes he consistently does win in a route they're just not the the best looking routes and they're they're mostly kind of those little break off kind of deals so i think there's a, a lot to like about uh justin jackson here yeah, i mean basically justin jackson i like 
like you. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> a little Borat. <laughs> that was a pretty funny movie. But uh, yeah, there's there's uh, there's not much to hate about this guy. It's just the model of consistency. He's got hands, which is if you're not going to be at the upper echelon of things, that's what you got to be able to do. And you can pass protect. So yeah, I'm kind of interested in what he has. And I think he's going to slip down boards enough to be, you know, especially in, in, fan, in the fantasy world. I don't know where mm-hmm. he'll fall in the actual draft or anything like that, but. He'll he'll I think he'll be a really good value for you. I mean, imagine this dude on like the Patriots team or something where they right. could where they could scheme him any which way they want, and and the the threat of the run is definitely there, and he can get it done smart out of guy. the air and and is smart and anticipates well and makes good decisions. Like, you know, I don't know. Obviously, it'd be pretty muddy there, and they're always got a slew of backs. But well, they're gonna probably lose Deion Lewis, mm-hmm. and who knows what's gonna happen with Gillisley and Rex Burkhead's only on a one year deal. Yep. So James White's the only one shirt up long term there. Yeah. So anyway, didn't want to just give some patriot love there, <laughs> uh, but that, I think that'll do it. Yeah, I mean we're both we both like Justin we Jackson. Like I can Justin see Jackson him ending up on our teams because sure. I think he's gonna fall. I think people are gonna he's gonna fall down the board, and I'll be looking to scoop him up when Me I can. Me too. I'm I'm all in on some some solid PPR potential, baby. Give me it. Let's do it. All right, we'll be back with some uh, with some Kalen Balage for your pleasure. <laughs>